this thing has been absolutely phenomenal as far as comfort. It's the, the Cadillac when you're looking at it, or as, as Jason calls it, the Lexus of, of saddles. I was like, well, if I throw a mic on, then I can help others the way that these people have all helped me. Born in the heart of the Pennsylvania deer camp, with the help of experts, friends, and local legends, we bring you valuable knowledge and powerful stories for your hunting adventures. <laughs> Welcome to the East Meets West Hunt Podcast with your host, Bo Martani. Welcome back to another episode of the East Meets West Hunt Podcast. This is the gear talk edition of the podcast, a bonus episode to the normal weekly episode here. But doing this both in, in video and audio versions and it's probably better suited for the video side of things so if you're listening you may want to go over to my youtube channel which is just my name bo martonic and uh check that out there if you want to see the products that we're talking about here but basically this these episodes are are based off of questions that i get on specific gear that i'm using why i'm using it why i'm choosing the different things how I went about it, what are the use cases for it, all those things. So I want to cover that in short 10 to 20 minute episodes to, to be able to go through and, and help you if you're looking at gear. Now the disclaimer that I give in all these episodes is that good gear does not make you a great hunter, but it definitely enhances that experience. So if you had to go and you had to buy tags or you had to buy gear, get the tag, figure it out, and save up for the gear later. And because those experiences are are always going to be better than having the best of the best of everything. Now there's certain things that I think are more critical to start out with than others and kind of move your way through it. Now, for example, like saddles, if you were being like, okay, I want a whole, I want to get into saddle hunting. I want a full mobile hunting setup. You know, I need a I need a saddle, I need ropes, I need platform, I need sticks. It's a lot of stuff that can add up quickly, especially when you get into high quality stuff. For me, when I look at that, I my personal preference is I want comfort that's in the tree while being minimalist. And maybe I could carry a little bit more weight on uh, with the sticks or the platform uh, to be able to set up but I know I'm comfortable once I'm up there and as I get more money to be able to buy some of these other things. For me it looks like I have a lot of the the best of the best gear and I do. One I've built it up through the years and also just working in this industry I've been lucky enough to be able to get a lot of this gear free of charge uh, or a discounted rate um, or things I've I have bought it at full price or watching sales But uh, when it comes to the saddle hunting specifically uh, Another disclaimer I, I need to give here. So timber ninja products that I'm gonna be showing here. I am a partner in the company so Understand that there's there's biases there, but the reason why I, I jumped into business with Jason and uh, Jordan over there is because the fact that I really love the products they hunted whitetails the way that I hunt whitetails and they're really looking at innovation first and making American made products that are safe. My background is like what I went to college for, what I did professionally for nine years before I started doing this full time was in safety and fall protection and safety training. So being able to have something that keeps you safe being able to go back home to your family is, is super important and and I feel like saddle hunting or using a saddle as a fall restraint device is a really good option to be able to do so so a traditional tree stand harness you're attaching from the back to the tree it help it doesn't help you from falling but it helps you in the event of a fall what saddles do is you're staying tight you always have tension on something or close tension on it so that you don't fall at all or if you do fall you're basically just spinning around you're facing the tree is easy for self-rescue now i'm not trying to go down a whole rabbit hole on the benefits of of saddle hunting or anything but i i do want to give that up front and so whether you're hunting out of a, a tree stand or you're hunting out of a saddle like they, they can be really uh really useful tools from a fall restraint standpoint so to start first and foremost, 
the biggest question we get asked at Timber Ninja and then I get asked personally through the podcast is, all right, what do I choose, a single panel or a double panel saddle? And what does that even mean? So basically, there's there's two types, the single panel and the, the double panel. Single panels are the most minimalist. They're just one panel that goes around your entire rear end. And it's basically like an adult diaper that you attach to the tree to the, to the front of it for a lack of uh, better words. But two panel saddles have two separate panels. You can have them tight together to act as a single panel, or you can loosen and separate them with just a, a buckle or whatever attachment method is on your saddle to be able to extend that and basically turn your saddle into a recliner that you can put up on your lower back, down below your legs, or a combination of the two for sitting for long sits. If you're minimalist and lightweight is your biggest concern, um, you still want comfort, but lightweight and you typically don't sit longer than four to five hours at a time, a single panel is probably gonna be a better fit for you. If you spend most of your time and you take your vacation off of work during the rut and you're willing to sit all day in the tree, uh, a two panel saddle is, is probably a better option for that. You can use both of these options for the other case, you don't need to have all of these saddles like I do here to, to be able to make it through a hunting season. But uh, it does it does help to know what you're doing the most, what your priorities are to be able to go through and, and choose that. So ad additional things to look for in a saddle is how do they connect around the waist? So if you like to wear a saddle in the early season, you're not bringing any extra layers on anything you want a belt that comes around and tightens and is not going to come loose that's the most frustrating thing in just about every saddle that i've used is that they come loose i can constantly just be yanking on the strap to keep it tight because it'd be falling down when you have the weight of your ropes and your accessory straps and stuff on the side of them it, it would be super frustrating so with with the uh, timber ninja saddles here they have a magnetic closure on them and uh, they have two sides adjustments. So you pull them and they lock into place. So it's called a fid lock system. It does not come loose uh, unless you, you're you taking it off there, but it will not come loose on you and fall down whatsoever. The sizing is, um, so keep in mind with sizing for layering. So say for example, a regular size saddle goes up to 36 inches and an XL goes from 36 inches to 40 inches and say you're at a 35 or 36 inch waist, what do you choose? And that's, that question gets asked a lot. And when I look at that, it's depending on how much layers you're gonna be wearing. If you're gonna be hunting the rut and you're gonna be having something like the Fanatic bibs on from Sitka that are big, they're bulky, they're super warm, that is gonna add inches to your waist and you may wanna get a bigger size. And what all really the sizing is, is just how far it wraps around you. So to reduce hip pinch and add comfort, that, that's an important thing to, to be able to consider. Um, and then safety. When you're looking at any of the, the products online, make sure that they say in there that they were met to uh, either meet or exceed OSHA's fall restraint standards. There's not really a standard for saddles out there, which is kind of scary. Uh, so making sure that that the companies are, are taking that in mind and, and making sure they're made out of a good materials is always an important step. And then um, also looking ways to attach platforms and sticks. So when I'm going up the tree, when I'm mobile hunting and I'm moving, everything's on my back, I don't wanna go back down to the ground at all. So by the time I put my first stick on the tree and climb up, I wanna have everything on me. Now, most saddles have molly webbing that runs around the top so you can put gear hangers or ties or anything like that on there to be able to attach your sticks to go up to it. What uh, Timber Ninja has and in, in these saddles here that I'll, that I'll come to show you here, um, they have the magnetic stick clip system so you can just clip them in there with the silent magnet attachment and be able to go up the tree and then just pop them out and go. And the same thing with the platform holder on the back. They're built into two of the three saddles I have here, but I'll, I'll go through that here in a minute. The next thing is the bridge. So the bridge is what you attach to your tether that's attached to the tree. So it's the thing in the front of you 
that goes up and attaches to the tree. I like ones that have adjustment where you can move it depending if the tree's leaning towards you, it's leaning away from you, and, and it helps with, uh, the longer you have it, it increases that angle so you don't have as much hip pinch. The shorter you have it, it's gonna come tighter across you there, so keep that in mind. And then also where, where it attaches, the material or the products with it, that you can adjust that angle depending on the tree. These saddles here have what we call a tacky bridge on there. So when they're locked into place, you cannot move that. But as soon as you loosen up this knot, now you can twist it into a different location, tighten it up again, and now it's secure. So that's something else to look at. To look at the three saddles in specific that I have here in front of me. So I have the Timber Ninja Nano. This is their single panel saddle option here. It's extremely lightweight. This thing weighs 16 ounces without these bags on the side, 16 ounces. You can roll it up to a super small size, basically the size of a Nalgene bottle if you wanted to pack it in your pack, or you can wear it around all day. Just when we were doing product testing on it, I would wear it all day, summer scouting in the hot heat. It's breathable with a four-way stretch material on the back. The, the material is, uh, Actually, which we call Ninja Flex, it is stronger than has a stronger tensile strength than ripstop. So briars, everything else, aren't going to tear it up. Uh, one of my buddies and a guy who's been on the podcast before, uh, Chris Weist, he's used this saddle uh, for 120 sits last season, and the thing still looks great. So it's it's pretty cool to be able to see it. So if you're minimalist, early season, four to five day or four to five hour sits it's a really really good option to be able to have and the, the difference with this compared to other single panels is the way you wear it you actually put this top piece above your belt line versus down on it or below it and it's meant to stretch around your body and once it stretches around your body in the high impact points where people would normally have discomfort which is on your hips there's two things that were done on this saddle it's wider, so it doesn't come to a V. It has a wider point here on the end, and there's padding in there to be able to help out with it. We were just at the Total Archery Challenge and having people sitting them, and uh, it was it was kind of funny that the just the look on their faces when they put them on versus other ones that they've used in the past. And initially, I thought the next set I'm gonna talk about, the Ultimate, was gonna be the one that I wore just about 95% of the time. And I didn't really give the Nano a lot of chance at first. And the more I wore it, I found I felt myself using that saddle. Uh, I can see myself using that saddle more so than the next one I'll talk about, which is which is the Ultimate. To go to that next saddle, which is uh, the Ultimate here, this is a rut hunter's dream because it has the ability. It's a two-panel saddle. It has the ability to to move it different positions through the day. I sat 14 days all day, dark to dark in this thing, and never had a time where I was extremely uncomfortable. Anytime you're in a stand or you're in a saddle for a long period of time, it sucks sitting there the whole time. So you're gonna have discomforts, but being able to adjust it and change the positions, maybe put it underneath your legs for a little bit, maybe put it up on your lower back, to be able to have those different positions helps out so much with that. And this is a padded two panel. So the foam that's used in here acts as memory foam and actually molds to your body after a while to add more comfort. So the more you wear it, the more comfortable it'll get for you specifically. And uh, out of the two, it's a little bit bulkier as you can see, but it really doesn't weigh a whole lot. It's just over a pound and a half, has the magnetic, uh, stick clips in the platform holder in the back. Those just clip in like this at any angle, but they can't come out until you lift up straight on it. And that's how, how you release it and be able to go up the tree. And then in the back, there's what's called the mud flap stick carrier. So you can take these off, extend it and put up to four lightweight sticks on the back. So if you didn't want to carry uh, a backpack and you wanted to go in with everything on you, that's one way to do it. Personally, I don't do that. I don't use that very much. I just, I like to, when I'm using this saddle, I'm usually putting on layers when I get to the tree. So I'll roll it up, put it in my backpack and put it on once I'm there at the tree. But this, 
this thing has been absolutely phenomenal as far as comfort. It's the, the Cadillac when you're looking at it, or as, as Jason calls it, the Lexus of, of saddles. And the last one I'm gonna talk about is the more budget friendly option, which is the original saddle from Timber Ninja called just the Black Belt. And this one does is not as feature rich as the other one. It has molly paneling all the way around the top. You can put any bags or accessories on the side. It does not have the built-in magnetic stick clips or the platform holder. So it makes it a little bit more adjustable for you. Um, it does not have the tacky bridge on there. It does have some channels in there to be able to help keep your bridge in place and does have uh, an adjustable um, bridge on the front and also has this one does not have the magnetic uh, waist belt on it but it does have a strong uh, metal one on there that you can still keep nice and tight when you're wearing it for walking in but it's a simpler version it's padded still super comfortable but it's a more budget friendly option if you're just looking to get into it and mess around there. Now, this one, just because I have the two nicer versions of it, I don't use this one a whole lot, but I wanted to show it um, from that standpoint, if if that's kind of what you're looking for from a from a budget standpoint to, to be able to do. But hopefully this helps you as I as I go through the, you know, basically I want to show you the differences between the single panel, double panel saddles and the different ones that I'm using throughout the season. So the Nano is a lot more of my early and late season hunting that are shorter sits. The Ultimate is my rut hunting saddle 100%. And uh, then you have your budget friendly option down here with, with the Black Belt. All made in the USA, all tested to meet or exceed OSHA's fall restraint standards. And uh, these two are actually made in North Carolina. This one's made here in Pennsylvania. So pretty cool to be able to see that. And um, like I said, I'm getting to have some, some influence on making these products. Obviously I'm gonna be biased and, uh, and like them, but I, I truly do believe in, in these products and being able to, to be able to use it. So if uh, you do wanna check out any of the Timber Ninja stuff, you can head over to TimberNinjaOutdoors.com. You can use the code East Meets West. That'll get you free shipping and um, sign up for the email newsletter there. Sometimes there's exclusive deals and letting you know about product drops and stuff that are that are coming out. But highly recommend if you're going to any of the Mobile Hunter Expos. I believe by the time this one comes out, the last one that'll be uh, available is Pennsylvania there. So go there. You can try the things out for yourself. Go try on all the different saddles, kind of like when you're going to shoot a new bow, try them all out and see uh, what fits you. If you can't make it there, do have a 30 day return policy. So if you try it out, you don't like it, send it back and uh, give you a refund. But uh, yeah, well, I hope everyone uh, got some value out of this, learned a little bit of something with the, the saddles and helped make that decision. I, I realized uh, that since I've been using saddles for quite a while now that I forget that not everybody has been exposed to them or understands how they work or how to look at it. So wanted to bring it down to a granular level and be able to explain that. So. If you like the video and podcast, please subscribe to it, uh, leave a comment, anything else that you want to hear about, you want me to, to go through some of the stuff that I'm using and uh, share it with your friends. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed this conversation, share it with your buddies, leave us a rating, a review and subscribe. If you want to check out more content like this, there's plenty in the links below. We truly appreciate having you guys along with us.